All right, all, and welcome back to DXB Today. Great to have your company looking into the world of biohacking in all its various forms this evening. Our next guest is a functional nutritionist and wellness and longevity expert, passionate about setting both adults and children free of disease and debilitating conditions. Please welcome to the sofa the co-founder of the Rejuve Wellness Clinics. It is Dr. Simone Laubscher. Simone, thanks so much indeed for being with us. Thank you for having me. Really kind of you to come and join us as we get to the, the guts of the matter now. We want to talk about <laughs> gut health. We heard from Ellie a little earlier on how important that is when it comes to longevity, when it comes to biohacking as well. Yeah. What would you say are the biggest myths and misconceptions about gut health? I think a lot of clients who come to me think that it's going to be a one-stop shop. So they just do a cleanse once and they reset the microbiome and they think, I've taken a probiotic now, then I'm khalas, I'm done. <laughs> where it's a lifestyle. It's something whereby we need to be thinking about supporting our gut long term. And Dr. as Dr. Ali was saying, it's not just what we're eating because the gut isn't just about your digestion. Like I've just written a book about the gut-brain axis coming out next year. So we now know it's absolutely essential to support your gut for your mental and physical health. Okay. That it's, um, there's more neurons, you know, it's called, we call the gut the second brain now. Mm. So, and even a, a fun fact is that if the human body is made up of trillions of microbes, actually about 60% we're microbial and we're only 40% human. Wow. Okay. <laughs> Fantastic. So is there any research about gut health that has kind of like made its way to the forefront, especially in terms of biohacking? Yeah, I think the main thing, which is what I've, I'm doing another PhD at the moment in gut sure. health and in integrated medicine and, and thus why the book. But the really amazing thing is that there's a now a, an area of research called psychobiotics. And then with my research, I'm doing it, creating a new a kind of tangent of that, which I'm calling metabiotics. So we know that there's certain microbes in the gut which actually affect your brain. And people with depression, anxiety are found to be lacking these types of microbes. And then married in with that, it certain microbes also affect our metabolism and whether we suffer from obesity, insulin resistance and diabetes. So what I'm doing now with my research is marrying in the psychobiotic as to our mental health and then in addition to that, the effect of the certain probiotics on obesity. Because what comes first? Are you depressed because you're overweight or you're overweight so you're depressed? So there's this link now between your mental health and your metabolic health. So that's the latest research that I'm personally looking into because that's really going to set a lot of people free of develop, you know, really serious conditions mm -hmm. where, like I'm sure when a client comes to see you, Dr. Ali, they're like, I've tried everything, yeah. but I can't get well. I can't get my mental health in order. I can't lose the weight. I, I just don't have the energy to live my life and I'm always exhausted. So there's amazing new research and it's my, as I said, passion project now. In my 50s, my next PhD, some <coughs> say I'm a bit mad, but I just love research. So that's the latest research, which is really exciting yeah. between the brain and the metabolism. Really? Yeah, so I wanted to ask because people always come to me and say, how can I optimize my sleep? Mm. And one of the things I think that really impact the quality of sleep that we have is our gut. What, what recommendations would you have for people about eating before sleeping the sort of things that they eat some people say more carbs help you sleep more you know things like that mm. is there any advice that you can give yeah my i people? think overall but that said you eat for what you're about to do right so if you're about to sleep why would you load on carbs because you need carbs for energy you're not going to run a marathon you're going to sleep right. so always trying to honor three to four hour window between eating and sleeping amazing the digestive yeah. system has a chance to rest and heal you while you're sleeping yeah but generally in the day, if you're, you want microbiome diversity, you want to be eating from the rainbow. You want to be eating your kimchi and your sauerkraut, your pre probiotics or your chia seeds. You want to be chewing your food. And that costs you nothing, 20 times per mouthful. So, and, the, and your gut is a long pipe. It's from your mouth to your bottom. It's the length of, a fo of a, one side of a football field the surface area of a tennis court. So that's a long pipe. So we need to be mindful about the function. It's not just the fuel, but I would say definitely the pre and probiotic and finding a good whole food plant-based supplement, not the synthetic, like at Rejuve, what I do. I only started inventing supplements because 25 years ago I had anorexia and bulimia, 
coming out of a very violent domestic relationship, unfortunately. So, um, trauma. Right. Uh, so I only started inventing my own supplements in London, uh, which were still made in the UK, but we have a base here for yeah. the last 10 years, only because um, looking for a good supplement as well. So you will know if it's plant-based because it'll read food on the back. Right. So I think, yes, honoring the gap between eating and sleeping. Yes, looking at the right type of foods, looking at the function, but getting good supplement, which we can actually feed the microbiota because it's not about clearing out in a war on the gut. It's about finding the balance which is right for you so you can thrive. Simone, I want to ask you a little bit more about supplements because I take my supplements and actually my grandmother who's 85 years old, she's visiting us right now and I, like an old lady, have two pill boxes that I stack <laughs> with my vitamin D, magnesium, omega, my homeopathy and I asked her, what all vitamins do you take? She's like, none. I was quite surprised by that because for someone who's 85 years old, she's got fantastic skin, hair, is active, she has purpose, she does a lot of voluntary work and is not really accustomed to any of this. And if she's having trouble sleeping, she'll pop in a pill. I'm like, why don't you just take magnesium? I was quite surprised that I take so many pills and yet somebody of their generation, it's not really a norm for them. Yeah, I think my grandmother as well just passed and she was 95. And we do need to see food as medicine. But what's changed between our current generation and our grandparents is that the world is just different. So their microbiome was laid down as a child, very robust, dirt, you know, buy everything with a bit of dirt on it. Um, yeah. And, you know, uh, it was all natural and your food was locally sourced. So you ate seasonally. You didn't look at your, your fruit bowl like I do in Abu Dhabi and it's like the United Nations. <laughs> you know, everything was local. So I think it's a very different um, ballpark as to where their health has started and considering their gut microbiome. So they kind of hit the ground running compared to us. And then our children again have with, you know, with cleaning products and over cleaning because your home has a microbiome as well. Mm. And even for us, when I, when I treat a client, I always come back to our seven pillars of wellness. So I think if you look at those seven pillars, and seven can be overwhelming, so even at Rejuve on our website, you can do a quiz which tells you your top three. But same thing, so we're not living in the days where our grandparents did. Things have changed, things became more chemical. The whole world, even from the air we breathe to the, to, you know, the, um, the chemicals that go into our skin. Mm. So I think that we do need to supplement now only because the world changed. But our grandparents are so blessed because that biodiversity was laid down before the world became so toxic. And also the soil, right? So it's the source of our food. Yeah. You know? So it's not rested every seven years like it used to be. No exactly. one can afford to do that, and they don't can't afford to remineralize the soil. So your food's only as good as the quality of the Very soil. Good, so. And so that's why, and also too, you don't have to take a thousand pills. <laughs> I started to invent, when I was curing myself of eating disorders, back in London, it used to be called Fresh and Wild, before it was Whole Foods, yep. back in the old days. And, um, and I used to take about 16 pills before every meal because I couldn't get the synergistic blends. And that's why I only started to formulate supplements because now I take one pill with about 30 ingredients. Mm. And it gives me everything I need for a certain specific imbalance right. mm. without having to have a thousand pills. So you don't have to have a thousand pills, <laughs> just so you know. <laughs> sounds incredible. Well, thank you so much, Simone, for joining us on the show and giving us that incredible insight. It's been a real pleasure talking you. to you. Thank you so much.